Roy Harper leads the Arrow family in their mission to capture Professor Ivo so they can learn how to defeat Amanda Waller's Amazo robots. Will they succeed or will another android destroy their plans? Let's talk about it in our review of Green Arrow number 15 from DC Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Green Arrow number 15. You know, one of the odder aspects of the Absolute Power event is Oliver Queen's all-in alignment with Amanda Waller. Despite her clear lack of moral foundation for depowering and imprisoning powered individuals, Joshua Williamson appears to be taking steps towards demystifying Ollie's turn by hinting that he's been acting as a double agent. Is Ollie's turn a true fake-out, or is he just protecting his own interests? Let's find out. But before we dig in, let's find out what happened with the Arrow family in Green Arrow number 14. Despite warnings from Batman and the remaining refugees from Amanda Waller's sneak attack on all powered individuals, Roy Harper led the team on a covert mission to find Professor Ivo. Why? Roy hoped the team could use Ivo's knowledge to defeat the Amazo robots of Task Force 7 and give the heroes a fighting chance. The team found Ivo, but Ivo was protected by a reprogrammed Tomorrow Woman, that's a surprise cameo we haven't seen in a long time, and Bright arrived to snatch up Ivo on behalf of Amanda Waller. That brings us to the current issue, Green Arrow number 15. We begin with a flashback to a private meeting between Green Arrow and Martian Manhunter, where the latter gives Green Arrow a box with the key to defeat the Justice League if the need ever arose. That brings us forward in time, and now we see Ollie digging up the box from its hiding spot and calling for a task force transport. Unfortunately, the transport is otherwise in use by Bright on a mission that Bright says Ollie assigned to him. Yeah, to make sense of the scene, context is important. You're going to need it. In the previous issue, Ollie suggested to Amanda Waller and her team that collecting weapons from captured heroes and villains isn't enough if the people who created those weapons are roaming free. Well, that makes sense. Although Ollie didn't specifically tell Bright to go after Ivo, Bright acted on Ollie's great observation. Further, the flashback with Martian Manhunter is the strongest hint yet that Ollie is planning a surprise for Waller. The issue shifts to the Arrow family falling out of the sky during the battle with Tomorrow Woman. The members use parachute arrows to survive the fall, except of course for Red Canary who doesn't use arrows, and which underscores why she's on the team in the first place. I don't know. I don't think anybody knows or cares. But she needs a helping hand, so she gets it. Tomorrow Woman hero lands in the middle of the group to continue the brawl. Connor Hawk steps up to convince Tomorrow Woman that she was a hero once and could be again if she chooses to override Ivo's programming. Connor's words get through to her, causing Tomorrow Woman to short out and shut down. Admittedly, the conclusion of the fight with Tomorrow Woman is a bit of a dud. That's not to say there isn't a way to get through to Tomorrow Woman by non-violent means. You could hack her remotely, you could do all kinds of stuff. But telling a woman to effectively calm down probably wasn't the most progressive choice. I don't think Williamson was intending to make it sound that way or have it come across that way. But in a roundabout way, the, yeah, that's how it comes across. After the fight with Tomorrow Woman, the Arrow team spots Waller's transport speeding off, and Ivo is nowhere to be found. Roy surmises that somebody on Waller's team probably snatched up Ivo, so they decide to head to the Arrowjets to give chase. Roy also notices that Cheshire and Leanne aren't around, so he contacts them to catch up. That's when they announce they're already on the transport and moving to free Ivo. The comic then shifts perspectives to onboard the transport. Cheshire and Leanne move to free Ivo while Bright isn't looking. Ivo isn't eager to go with Cheshire out of gratitude, knowing he'll just be used as a pawn regardless of who he goes with. In a surprise move, Ivo offers Cheshire a large sum of money to free him and take him where he wants to go. Even more surprising, Cheshire agrees, but before the two can escape, Bright returns to capture everyone. The structure of this scene makes sense, generally speaking, but the details are odd. Cheshire has traveled a long way, literally and figuratively, to get back into the good graces of the Arrow family. So for Cheshire to quickly agree to Ivo's offer of cash seems wildly out of place. But it doesn't play out, so it doesn't really matter. But still, you kind of now get a sour feeling about Cheshire and her place in the broader scheme of Green Arrow canon. Outside the transport, the Arrow family catches up to the transport via an Arrowjet. What follows is a battle between archers and Waller's stormtroopers with jetpacks, Bright arriving with hostages, which forces Roy to make a very deadly choice, and a last-minute assist from an uncertain ally. 
Overall, Joshua Williamson delivers a high-flying issue that leans heavily on action to make the Arrow family's contribution to the Absolute Power event seem meaningful. The issue is generally fun, so there's no problem there, but the net contribution to Absolute Power, in retrospect, is negligible. Except for the brief tease that Ollie has a secret plan cooking to defeat Waller, there's really nothing in here you need to know. So you can take it for what it is, or you can skip it and really not miss anything. Let's switch gears and talk about the art. Emma Clay Nowapun's art looks great. Since Green Arrow number 15 is an action-heavy issue, the weight of the issue falls to Nowapun to keep the scenes moving with smooth transitions, energy, and lots and lots of exciting-looking action. Visually speaking, there are no complaints here. The lines look good, the figures look good, the colors look good. It's all pretty much standard stuff of what you should be expecting out of DC. And that's about as good as it gets. Final thoughts, what do you think about Green Arrow number 15? He jumps right into a heavy action issue as Roy and the Arrow family fight Tomorrow Woman and Bright for control of Ivo. Joshua Williamson's and Amon Clay Nalpan's action-heavy issue is largely engaging, even if the net contribution to the Absolute Power event doesn't amount to anything important. Therefore, Green Arrow number 15 earns a super solid 7 out of 10. It's not the greatest tie-in in the world. It's not the worst tie-in in the world. It's just sort of there to give you some action and some fun to complement the main Absolute Power event. But what do you think? Is Green Arrow one of your favorite series that's tying into Absolute Power? Do you like another tie-in series better? Or do you <laughs> not like Absolute Power at all? Give us a thumbs up if you do like Absolute Power. I want to know your opinion about that. And leave us a comment below with what you think will come out of Green Arrow after it wraps up when the Absolute Power event is done. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review and buy this comic to help support the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.